Welcome. My name is Dr. Stephen Herod, and I would like to present to you debugging and exporting data from process model. What I am interested in displaying to you today is a method by which you can export the values of specific events from process model and analyze them in more detail within your own spreadsheet or database software, or charting, graphing software, whatever. And also at the end of that I'll also demonstrate how you can stop process model based on any kind of uh, particular condition you might like to program into some logic in a particular process or uh, activity. So what we're going to do is I'm going to build a basic process model uh, template. Then I'm going to demonstrate how you can export a value from this template after the simulation runs. And then I'll demonstrate quickly how to stop the simulation on a condition. Say uh, a limited number of uh, entities created or something of that nature. So first let's get our process model up and running. I've already launched it here. Let's build ourselves a really basic model. We have some entities, well, one source of entities anyway. Let's put in a process. Let's connect the two. Let's define our arrivals in this process. Periodic arrivals. And let's set this to uh, uh, an inter-arrival time with, that is exponential in its distribution. Let's say this has an inter-arrival time of 10 minutes exponential. And that's good get our mouse pointer back here and let's see the process and let's give this an exponential service time of five minutes and let's quickly run this simulation to test this basic scenario let's check our options I don't think we need 40 hours worth of this let's cut this way back to something much shorter. Let's do four hours. I think that is going to be plenty for our demonstration. Okay, four hours. And let's run it quickly and just see what happens. I'm gonna save it. Here we go, it's running, clicking along here. Let's, well, it's going pretty fast, so I don't think we'll have to wait too long. Two hours, you can see up here in the corner, three hours and some minutes, and we're hit coming up on done, four hours. Done at four hours, very good. Yes, let's see the results quickly. Here are our results. Nothing very exciting here so far. And you can see we've got average processing time right here, 4.6 minutes. So we're coming into our five minute exponential service time. And what else have we got? Looks pretty good. Looks pretty good. So some pretty basic data, pretty much what you would expect. Looking good, looking good. So let's close this out. Now let's suppose, so here we this is telling us we have this average processing time of 4.6 minutes. Well, what if you wanted to know something more detailed about that? What if you wanted to know, oh, really specifically, what was the shape of those processing times? How many long ones, how many short ones? You really wanted to see some detail. You really want to know more than just the average, more than just some sample statistics. Well, let me show you how to do that. Close that out. Come back to our model here. What we want to do is we want to have a way within this process, we would really like to have a way to have a record of every one of these process events. 
we would like to know every time an entity goes through this process what was the processing time assigned to that entity. Well to do that we have to set up a few little bits of pieces and put them together and I'm going to show you how to do that right now. First thing we have to do in order to record this information is we have to define a variable. Under the insert menu attributes and variables right here variables we need to define a new variable for us to record this information to so I hit new I've already done that here's my new name I'm gonna name this let's name this P R O C T I M E proc time sounds good that's our new variable now this is going to be real valued because this is a decimal number this is the value of the time assigned to each entity as it goes through the process. We'll just leave this initial value at zero. That's fine. Don't need to worry about that. Leave this alone. Leave this alone. Leave those the way they are. And close. So we'll close that. Now let's go into our process. And we want to define something within the action right here where it says action. So what we want to do here is put our new variable slide down to the bottom here where it says variables pick variables and look this has now appeared this was not there before if you had looked at this before we made this new variable it would not have been here this is new this is a user defined variable we can now pick that so paste paste that into our action box and now let's assign our time to this variable. So we want to say proc time equals, and now exponential, five minutes. So we've now assigned our variable to our, our time to the variable. Let's go back to the general tab and take this out. Take that out right there. Set that to zero. And now go back to the action. We need to add a second line to this because now we are we need to assign this time also to the actual process itself. So now to assign the process time, we need this statement. Time parenthesis proc time space min for minutes. Close parenthesis. So now what this action is going to do is it's going to set the variable proc time to an exponential sample with a mean of five minutes and then it's going to set the process time to this value that we just saved right there and as you can see over here we've left that at zero so this is now no longer active this line is no longer controlling no longer uh, where we want to put our process time it's now over here so close this. We're done. We can save that. And let's run it again. So simulate, save and simulate, and run. And it's running. Clicking along here. Shouldn't take very long. Look at our time clock up here in the corner. One hour, two hour, three hour and we're done and let's see the results yes here are our results now the results themselves our simulation numbers have not changed see this we're still at 4.63 average time because we're still using the same distribution we haven't even changed the stream with which we're drawing the numbers from nothing has really changed but we have intercepted the data we've intercepted the setting of this value and we have written it to a variable which allows us now to view, go to the view menu, time series, plot, and now we have an option to view the value of this variable. Now this whole menu is not accessible, it's dimmed, it's grayed out if you have not defined a variable. So this only exists because we defined a user variable. So here's our variable, move it over here, and you can plot that. And there it is. There is the value of proc time 
over our, the t over the duration of our simulation. It's not a very uh, uh, detailed line here, but it's giving us all the data. And if I go back and do that again, view, time series, plot, make that selection again. Now this time, instead of drawing the chart, let's here, here's a button that says export data. I'm going to export that data. And let's see if I want to, that's, that's, that's where I want it, yep. So sample process time. And we'll save that. OK, we're done. Let's close that out. Let's go to Microsoft Excel. Actually, we'll go over here. We'll open our folder. There's our sample right there. Open that up, and look at this. OK, so now what we have, what we have first in the left column is we have the clock time in hours for this simulation. This, this is 0 0.9 hours, 1.22 hours, 2.04 hours. And on the right, over to the right of it, this is the value of the processing time assigned at that point for that specific event, for that entity going through the process. So the first entity going through the process got a time of 2.44 minutes. The next entity going through got a value of 4.79 minutes, and then 1.71 minutes, then 0 0.9 minutes, and 4.89 minutes, etc., etc., etc. So now you have detailed data of the values assigned to this entity that you can use for your debugging or for your analysis. So that could be very useful if you're doing something detailed or something requiring some more sophisticated analysis or something where you really need to see a shape of the distribution of the values, you can look at those values now. You can look at your spreadsheet and get those values. So I'm going to close that. I'm not going to worry about saving that. So that's the first part of our demonstration. No, I'm not going to save that. We'll leave that alone for now. So the next part, now I want to show you how to stop the simulation on a condition. So let's go back to this. We're done with this. Let's close this. Let's close that. OK, process model. OK. Now let's suppose that you might like to stop this simulation after the first, oh, let's say, three entities completed. Three entities completed through this process. So let's go here. What we need to do is we need to set another action condition. And in order to do that, we need a variable here. We need a new variable. Let's call this completed. This is now going to be an integer variable. Its initial value is still 0. Whoops. I probably want to leave. Let's go back a minute. Well, no, let's keep that. That'll be good. So let's, we'll, yeah, let's do that. OK. Completed, integer 0. That looks good. Let's, let's do that. Let's go to my process dialog. Let's change this back to the way it was before. So exponential 5 right there. What I could have done is I could have left this in place and defined, in addition, this new completed variable and had both activities going on at the same time. But I'm going to just take this out and let's start all over and let's do the new thing here. So the first thing we want to do is tell this software, tell this simulation to update this completed value every time it passes through this process activity. This process action is activated. This script, this code, is called at the moment that a new entity enters the process. So if you're trying, there's a certain amount of sensitive timing to how this is activated. Things can still be going on in the simulation while this code is being activated. And this code, once it activates, can stop other processes going on in the simulation in their tracks. So there's a, there's a certain amount of timing going on here. But anyway, 
we're going to set this completed equals we're going to increment this basically by one completed equals completed plus one then we're going to say if completed let's say we want to stop at three so if completed is greater than three then stop and I'm gonna give it a message give stop a message stop limit entity limit reach just like that so let's close that we'll save that and let's run it again entity limit reach so now what I'm seeing now this right here this is this is a stop dialog that has been generated by the code by the program commands I have put into the action code for that process so this is triggering us and telling us that we've had see and look up here it says three processed so we processed three and then when it went to increment to the next one to go to number four it triggered the stop so we've stopped the simulation let's see the results here we are here are the results there we are three processed right there so we have stopped this simulation at the point it was about ready to start processing the fourth person now notice what I meant about the timing and the sensitivity of a timing we have stopped this simulation it, it did actually go ahead and create a fourth entity and that fourth entity was just about ready to step over the threshold into the process and that triggered the code telling the simulation to stop so some of your statistics and some of your output numbers will be a little bit influenced depending on which one you're looking at by this fourth entity that's coming down the pike towards the process but this still gives you an idea of how you might tinker with your code and implement your own custom stopping points and debugging points you could use this to debug your code tell it to stop after a certain number of entities or a certain number of actions so that you can then pull the data out and take a look and see okay wait a minute where I don't I don't understand this I need to do some manual calculations and double check the accuracy of my model so that's it we're done thank you very much we've built our basic model I demonstrated how to export some of your data at a very fine level of detail and I've demonstrated how you can create a debugging stop condition or a stopping condition in your model I appreciate spending the time with me look forward to talking to you again thank you very much bye bye now